Okay, so we are gonna go ahead and get started. I'm really happy to be here and present this presentation. This is basically my life. This is uh, what I'm experienced in and want to show you something. Um, we have only 45 minutes, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, a lot to explain you, to tell you. So let's start. Uh, welcome to this presentation. We are going to talk about quality assurance and I will try to convince you <laughs> that it's not optional, basically. And um, good luck to us, to me, probably. <laughs> so let me explain um, something about myself. I am a senior technical project manager at FFW right now, but I uh, started as a quality assurance engineer. Um, I was, um, originally I was uh, tester, then I became automated specialist and I was trying to do quality assurance and then I became a leader and then I became quality assurance manager and at some point I became a project manager. In here I'm going to give you my expertise as a project manager in Drupal, as a quality assurance engineer in Drupal and basically will give you some tips and uh, some tools what you could use daily in your, in your ongoing work. So we are going to talk today about importance of quality assurance, briefly, really briefly. Then we will uh, talk about applications which we could use to help in that. And also we will discuss a little bit a couple of the browser ones that could help you. As well as we will talk through the common local bots. Again, each of this line, line will be a separate talk, right? To figure out what is the help tools and so on. But our goal is just to aggregate whatever information we have and just to give you quick tips of how you get, you could get quality on, on some appropriate level with minimum efforts. So um, first, what I wanted to ask all of you, could you share with me what are your roles? So they, that will help me basically to, to kind of uh, polish this presentation and just talk to you and understand your roles. Do we have developers here? Okay, we have. Do we have project managers here? We have five of those actually. <laughs> Do we have any sales in here? We have? <laughs> hey! <laughs> later. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any quality assurance engineers? Hi. Uh, okay. Do we have some other roles? Someone who is not, whom I didn't mention. Some, any, any role, like owners of the companies. What is your role? I call the application developer. But yeah. I don't develop specifically. I just support the oh, site. Yeah. Nice. Any other roles? Uh, web accessibility. Accessibility. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So, the next slide. So, we all know that quality is important everywhere. So, whenever we touch, we try to figure out either it's good or bad, or how it works, if it's usable, or if it's kind of does what we it's attempt to do. And we are, whenever all we take, we are doing testing all over the place. Especially, we do it work with the complications and it's clear for everyone that this is something that's basically all over the place and, and needed for uh, in our lives. So let's define, define a couple expectations. First, we'll focus on applications and some specific tools. We have no time to talk about the quality assurance theory. We will not be talking about boundary conditions, types of the testing and all of that stuff. Just let's focus on something really specific. I am not doing any advertisements of any tools I'm going to show you here. So just for you to understand that this is kind of something, some tools which I use on a daily basis. When I reinstall my computer, it's like one day and I need those tools and I can't live without those tools. I'm using those as for the quality assurance checks, as a project manager, as uh, when I do some pre-sales and I have to estimate some, some of the work and this is the quick way for me to use those tools on ongoing basis. So, no advertisements. There will be no 
uh, when I will be talking about this tool, I assume that there will be no um, ability for me to log in into the Drupal website. I know some of you are developers and they have access to their sites. But most of you, when they start to work with any project or they support or they are trying to do an estimate of some migration or anything else, you basically don't have any access to the, to the back, backstage of the, of the Drupal website. So I'm saying here that let's assume we don't have any access to the backstage and we kind of testing whatever we have with whatever permissions and we are kind of just, just trying. And we will have a small game here. So we have a special prize for someone who will count uh, amount of bucks which you will see on the screen through the presentation. So we have first talk right now. So please make a notes for yourself and just don't forget. Uh, at some point we will ask you how many bucks we have and the winner will basically get this prize. So, any questions about the expectations? One more remark, we, we will, when we will be talking about those tools, we will be analyzing not specific features of the website, but the whole website. So this is basically the tools to figure out and measure the quality for the whole website in general. So let's go next. So, so how to speed up? So at some point at FFW we had a, we had that speed and we had really a lot of work to do. We were working on, on the ongoing projects. We had a lot of the new projects to estimate. To estimate, we have a lot, a lot of new people who came to us, and we had to train those. And we basically were like struggling about time. Uh, we have new people. We need to train them. We need to also to cover the actual work. So, what could save us time on just just on testing? So we started to to see, uh, to search and try, and those are the tools I like the most. We have a couple sets in here. So, the first tool I am going to share with you, it's called Integrity. It's a free tool which gives an opportunity for you to basically scan your website with a broken window. I saw that it, it's, it, we have a lot of tools like that, but this is the primary I, I would like to recommend to everyone. So why it's so good? So for example, you are doing preparations to go live. You are basically trying to launch some new Drupal website and you just have to check if everything is good, doing good, works well, do you have any broken links and, and so on. Second, uh, if you just have some live site and just trying to figure out how many pages, is it stable or not, what is happening around, and you just scan the website. Third option is like one, every time you do a deployment, you just run the tool, uh, afterwards you just deploy the code. And you just see whatever was broken or whatever is happening, if any new redirects are there, or, or if there is any issues for, for the website. Then uh, we also had a process which we, it, it, this tool really helped uh, like monthly audit of your content for the website. For people who have a lot of the content on the website, ongoing updates there and here, multiple people managing the CMS, basically um, it was really important monthly to try to scan and see the results and just to keep it clean, keep it convenient and to try, try to figure out if there is any broken links. And basically, overall, if you would like to see, okay, this is the website, what are the redirects it has, if we have any hidden content, if we have, what are the responses of the pages, this is the tool stuff which, will, which is going to help. And uh, as well, it basically generates you the list of all of the pages and gives you an, an ability to figure out is it website multilingual or not, whatever structure it has, and and so on. So let me share you a couple screens about how it looks like. So this is the initial screen when we configure the tool itself. It has an ability, it's a, a Mac application for Mac. So um, it's, um, you just download, install, it's free. Uh, you, enter, you are entering the URL on top of the screen. And then you will start to kind of configure whatever parameters you are going to set it in here. 
So for example, we're able to figure out uh, the broken links internally on the website itself, as well as the broken links outside. So whenever content is linked to the external website, we, we're able to basically click on all of the links of the website automatically, programmatically, right? And get the statistic about what is happening. Be careful with this tool because not all of the Drupal application will be able to handle it. And uh, some of the some of the projects, some of the uh, will uh, not survive. So you, you could basically <laughs> aggregate a lot of testing in here. Or you could control the speed of the scan and some of the websites could basically fail. And at some point will be not responsive. Uh, in responsive, not like responsive in the screen, they will just fail with the server error. So be careful with that. Just scan trusted sites which you own. Don't kill the competitors' websites, so if they have any bugs, but basically this is the tool that could easily show you that the website performance or it fails in load and this is really important. Some um, Drupal websites will not allow you to crawl the website and they basically will throw some error, like um, after like five threads will come to the website and will click on some links. There will be an error that it's timeouts, you are longer, no longer allowed to, to crawl the website. So that's why you have to configure your timeout just to make sure that this is like not truly automated and quick uh, requests, but this is like at least one request per second, so the website will, will, will not lock out this IP and will not like stop you from doing the scan. So, um, once you will start set up, you will provide the URL. By the way, you could you could also scan the dev hidden uh, website if you have the basic authorization on the website. It still will allow to pass through the basic authorization. You will just need to provide the URL with the basic authorization inside it, and you could always Google how to kind of uh, position the login and password into the actual URL. So uh, next, once you started to crawl the website, you will get statistic. And this, is, this statistic is really helpful. Like uh, you will be able, by clicking through those tabs, you will be able to go to specific views of how this information is reflected. Um, it, you will be able to see just every link the crawl tool used to click and every page it used to go through as well as important for me, it's, uh, I'm using it daily, is to show you statistic by status. So it gives me an ability to understand that first of all, I got blocked at some point because I got the timeouts. Second, I have some hidden pages which are mentioned in the public content, which is also not a good idea, right? To have hidden content. The, so users just, just on not authorized users will click on on uh, some hidden pages and get to the access denied screens. As well, I see that there are some 302 redirects, which is really bad for the website, just because we used to, if it's a good redirect, it's supposed to be 301 for, uh, for the best um, uh, search, search engine optimization, right? So this is like a red flag for me. As well, in case if I will see any, Broken links. It also will give me a statistic um, if it if it fa fails and with what error, as well as if your server will will deny me some error. This is the spot where I will go and basically aggregate the, the results. So example of the screen and this is exactly what, where I'm using it. It's like when we have by the way comment box. Don't forget the comment box. Uh, this is the screen when I just realized, okay, we have a broken link in here, and I click on that broken link, and I, this is the screen I, I see. I able to see that copy, which which is broken, which is linked to the broken link. I able to I able to go to that page and to find that particular content and fix it. I able to highlight how the crawler reached this particular position. So if the crawler searched through a couple pages, how the how it came to this exact spot. So you will be able to, to, to locate the position of that particular broken link. So uh, a really helpful tool, and again, especially when you are 
like support in any application, just to kind of to crawl, to check and quickly see what's going on and what are the issues and and uh, how to locate the concrete, uh, concrete troubles. Another, another tool I would recommend you, it's called Screaming CO Spider. A uh, really good tool, and I use it even as a project developer, like project manager, and uh, when I am also, I'm using it also when I do some migrations or estimations, when I have brand new website, which is like black box for me, and then I'm trying to figure out, okay, how, how big it is. Is this website, how I can estimate it, how I could give it to developer to give me an estimate if I even don't realize how, how many pages, if it has multilingual, if it has anything like that. So this tool is really helpful for me. So tool is free, but it's limited for 500 URLs crawling. Uh, personally, I, I need more just because I, I work with big websites or small even, but 500 could be not enough for, for everyone. But Screaming um, Frog, it's um, basically more oriented on getting the same crawling effort, but with getting the list of all URLs, and with all of the uh, metadata, and all of the uh, information which is visible for Google. So basically it's a crawler, which is op um, like optimized for SEO audits. So uh, great way for me to quick a quick, quick list of all of the pages and export them to the Excel. So it's also really helpful. So like clients are saying, uh, for, for example, we are delivering the website and clients are saying, what should I test? Give me the link of the URL. For me, it's like like one minute just to get the list of the URL, uh, all of the pages and just to give it to the client. So it's just one click and then there. Then, uh, if I have an, a new website and I don't know the structure underneath it, I will not be clicking by clicks through the navigation and try to figure out what is the structure. It's quicker for me to scan, get the list and review, and then try to figure out, okay, we have authors, like 10 pages authors, we have multilingual, we have uh, articles, we have something else, and basically really helps me to kind of to do quick um, scan. Also, quick way of doing the audit of all of the redirects, again, same approach, it's also able to give me the response of the page as well as to give me uh, like that information which error code, uh, error code the web page responded to. And also this crawler will go, as the previous one this also, but this one will go through every every content or every button, or every element on the website and will basically do an actual click and actual event on that. Um, also good when you are not sure about, like you have some PHP errors and uh, you are not able to, uh, to locate those, right? You are not able to figure out what invokes those errors. So the tool will basically click on everything you have on your website as well as on external links, on internal, all buttons, on menus, all, and then you you will have in the watchdog, right? So you will have a message, what was clicked, where it was clicked, and uh, you will be able to figure out that PHP error which came from this after this scan. It's also a good way of uh, like scanning and uh, seeing the the overall uh, state of the website. And as well, it will, it will go also give me the list of the pages and will give me the, uh, in case if I have open notes, like if I have no aliases for some of the pages, the tool will give me a red flag, so okay, have a page, and it's just without the alias. So it, for me, it's also obvious that this is a bug, and I have to kind of figure out how to fix it with my team. So let me um, give you some screens about this tool. So, um, again, this is also crawler, like a previous one, but that one was focused on getting the broken links. This one is also able to give you the broken links, but it also will give you much more. It will give you metadata type, H1s, it will give you response code, it's, it's also able to give you, uh, like, um, 
I don't know, a lot of the information. So here you're just entering the URL of the website you're going to crawl. Again, the same rule, remember, do not overcrowd some websites. They could not handle <laughs> this automated scripts. But overall, for most of the sites, uh, you will be good. But just keep in mind there is a configuration when you could configure the speed. To minimize the speed, if you are not sure if it will handle the load, then uh, just, just play with that. You're specifying the URL, and then uh, you're able to filter on, on, and you will start the scan. And you will be able to filter by type, you're able to scan HTML, you will be able to see, okay, we have, we have some JavaScript, we have CSS, and so on. But the most I'm interested in is HTML, those are your actual pages which are loading. And also, I am interested in getting some, for example, PDFs or images if I have to give the snapshot of all of the images for the website, or if I'm going to give the client uh, what PDFs we have on the website or something else. But most of, uh, most of, for most of my projects, I'm using HTML. So HTML will give me ability to get the list of the pages then sort them out, figure out the response codes, and get the understanding of overall structure and overall response of the website. Uh, as well as a really detailed audit of the uh, metadata. This is the next part after I started the scan. This is example. You could figure out whatever filters you are going to apply to the scanned results and you're going to export the results to the CSV file and basically process the information we have. So this helps me just to see, okay, which are the, the pages we have, if it has any multilingual, if it has uh, any redirects, um, what will be the titles of those pages, what will be the uh, meta descriptions. It also provides uh, numbers for the Meta titles and meta descriptions will also help me basically to figure out, okay, if the title is bigger than, for example, 56 characters, that means for me it's outside of the recommended uh, for, for search uh, engines uh, titles or for meta descriptions, the same. I know the specific parameters I have to look through and basically this scan gives me a lot of information and a lot of bugs like in, in five minutes. I see, okay, this looks good, URLs are good, what about the, for example, uh, URLs, aliases, pod patterns, and uh, um, by analyzing all of this, you will be able basically to, to, gi to give an overall um, feeling about, uh, overall feedback about the quality of the application. As well as I face a lot of the project where we have no meta description at all, or the titles are not much with the actual topic of the page or anything else. This is like something which is really uh, common. So really good tool, expert into CSV, and you just process the information. You just have to understand how to process the just that information and just play with it around. So you could filter, sort, sort figure out whatever is broken, whatever is, could be considered as bugs, and then you will go from there. So uh, one other way of doing this same, almost the same work is just to go to the sitemap XML, just to grab the data in sitemap XML, just parse the file, right, to get the list of all of the URLs, and then one by one click on those and see what is happening around. This is also not the trusted, I would say, way, uh, because you know that sitemap XML is configurable, so developers could adjust whatever is to show, whatever you do not to show on that page. But overall, it's also a good way for you to quickly get the list of the, all of the pages for your website, especially for the projects you are never had a chance to work with, just to get an idea of whatever happening around and uh, understand the structure. Um, this helps all the time to figure out the content, which is not style, for example. When developers made some taxonomy terms, and then they assign those to the content types, and basically then we have some links which, which bring us to the pages which are public, but not even style, just because developers or publishers didn't catch that out, as well as gives you just a quick way of clicking through the website and just see whatever, whatever is going on there. So, um, 
And now there are also really good tools to use. It's called Lighthouse. It's an open source tool which is built in your browser. Uh, really, really just to install Chrome, uh, enable the DevTools, right? You just inspect one of the elements and uh, you will get there. Just click on the, um, how it's called, Audit um, tab on the DevTools and then just select some settings. I will show you something. So just figure out, do you want to do the performance? Do you want to do some best practices, accessibility testing or CEO optimization testing for your, for your site? And just either select all of those categories or select only one category, so up to you. Whenever do you want to do the configuration that check for the mobile or for desktop, and then you will you will end up scanning your website. It will take a while, probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but you will get this data. So this is the best case scenario for sure. You will have other like couple reds and some some green. But uh, again, it depends on the projects you are going to scan. And uh, this one I'm using also for the new uh, for the new request. Like we made some website and it's out of scope to have the accessibility. It's a separate story, right? How to do the accessibility evaluation, audit, and all of that stuff. But uh, so, for example, client is saying, "I would like to figure out what is my it was my accessibility." Okay. We will just run the tool and say, this is what we have after like 10 minutes of browsing your website. This is the tool we used. This is the results we get. This is what we, uh, what are the uh, kind of whatever we are following right now, whatever we are uh, failing with. Do you want to do the detailed audit of the website or do you want to go forward and just to work with it with this list. So the tool gives you exact uh, list of uh, recommendations as well as for performance, as well as for accessibility, as well as uh, for search engine optimization. And I like it because if you're not like expert in search optimization, for example, you will have a ballot like only you, are, you have more than two H1s on your web page means for me like a red flag because you're supposed to have only one, but no one knows, right? Those rules, if you are not truly really work with them and aware of the specific standards we have. But the tool will out automatically will say to you, okay, you have more than one H1 on so your web page, please uh, fix it. And you will already have at least one step to do it. And it's and the same for the accessibility will give you the, the uh, exact uh, kind of use cases. Sure, you have to analyze the results, you have to review the report and do your own research or judgment and based on that do the plan what you're going to do. But but it's really good tool for someone who is just needs at least like 10 minutes and get the quick perspective of whatever is working on, whatever is bad, whatever is, is good. If the mobile performance is good, if mobile performance is bad, what is the response of the load of the main page? What is the response of load for, for some other pages? What, what is happening around? So um, uh, this, this tool, so let me go next. Then overall, when you work with any, any uh, projects, right? It doesn't matter. Drupal or no, just keep keep thinking of whatever could uh, could help me to speed up. I was asking this for uh, uh, from my all of my quality assurance engineers. I was like, you are doing this every day. What what you could use? Just think of we have everything right now. So developers are developing so many nice add-ons for the browsers that you could just you could even just think of that this is happening right now. So, um, and uh, some of those could be not helpful, just, just install, try it, and delete. Just figure out whatever you are doing. So I, I got, I have a couple examples. I got a girl who was clicking, like she was a tester, and she was clicking through manually through all of the links by herself. Like she was, she was just spending like five minutes just by just clicking on some links just because she has to test them all. And what I just proposed her, just install this, add-on, just open sitemap page on your website, just make sure developers will make you the appropriate sitemap page with all of the like 
structure of the website and just just do it with one click just open all of those pages in one click so she did it and she spent like uh, she she was able before she was testing the website for one week and after the, she used this tool she was like able to do the same testing for one day because she was just with one click and she started to search for another tools which would help her so really helpful again with one click you could just open up to 10 or like whatever area you will select all of the links open graph preview really really cool add-on you just enable it and you just whenever you are browsing the website and you have to figure out the quality of the open graph data for your website you just click on that add-on and it will show you okay no image for the open graph or the, there is no canola uh, anyway no some, some, <laughs> some data in here it will highlight whatever is empty whatever is good and it will give you like a quick way of you will not go to the Facebook development tool to scan and see whatever uh, whatever is on your website whatever Facebook see when someone shares your website but you will just be able to see the same on your browser by clicking the add-on and you're able to analyze the results and see if I have open graph at all no then I have to add the module do I have image no probably I have to ask my content people to upload those images or at least ask my client to give those images and so on because someone will try to share my website right and I, I want to have it a nice way visible on the Facebook so uh, if I am for example testing some Google Tags or anything else it's also like I have a dawn for that if I am um, for example Google Analytics has a lot of uh, like events, right? And it's really easy for me. Okay, what Google Analytics uh, reports you I'm using right now, right? It's just click and I see. Okay, if I'm doing something, uh, is it tracked and went to the DTM? Okay, I, I click on the don and it will give me that information. So usually developers are like, yeah, it's also okay just to inspect, go to the dev tools and do the same through the other way of doing this. But I'm just try trying to say that this will be just one click and you are there and you need that specific perspective you are looking for and the tool will help you to get there. But you have to know where you should go to get it somewhere else, like right, a building in your browser. So just think of whatever you are constantly using and whatever could help you. <coughs> So full screen capture, I also found it's really useful. I have MonoSnap uh, as a Mac application on my laptop just to make some screenshots, but full screen capture gives me ability just to by click to generate PDF of my website, of my page for example, and send it to the client like in one click. And usually the issue with the screenshot tools that they will not scroll down, right? They will just capture whatever on top and this so one. This tool is actually helps to give you the perspective on mobile, on desktop, and do that, that screenshot uh, and e export it to, to JPEG file or to the PDF file. Um, another add-on that's on top, it helps me to figure out the redirect path. So for example, if I am failing, uh, so I have some page which fails with the server not found, I, will, I am trying to get somewhere and the, the tool it gives me just a look what happened before it gets to that state so it gets, it gets me okay I went to this page this page redirected me to this page this page redirected me back and I have infinite loop right that's why my basically website is failing so redirect path is really helpful add on for your browser and again, if you don't have time to crawl the whole website and you are just here and you're reviewing it and you just let's check the broken bomb and you have like your screen highlighted with green and red, red and you will see the broken links checker add-on will give you like a, an ability to see okay my footer <laughs> is not yet linked to the pages my header is not ready for them, right? So it's one click and you see this is all of the broken links. And especially it's important for developers who kind of, they know that there are some pages, right? But they still 
uh, have no time to take care of those on dev server. They, on local, they probably did the change, but they, that specific is the content change they have to take care of. So the tool it will give to quality assurance engineers this quick way of getting the list of the, all of the broken links on this website really quickly. So think of any uh, helpful browser add-ons that could help you. You, you, you just do a research, it's a lot of tools. This is only the tools I'm using on going basis. But there could be some other tools which could help you in your particular work. Just uh, think of this and just try to search and you will find something interesting. So, count box, please. <laughs> so, um, also as part of this presentation, I also wanted to talk about some of the common purple bugs we have and some of the common bugs we're basically able to, uh, to locate with the, helps, with the help of the tools I have shared with you. So first of all, uh, broken links, right? It's clear that that's, that happens and it's really big problem for, 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 for every website. Open nodes, so we see a lot of the websites where we have no alliances we have IDs, which is truly a security issue, and we have to make sure all of the content is uh, basically uh, with the auto-generated aliases. And you are, you are ready before launching your website, you are trying to figure out that and get the report and get that fixed. Then, um, inconsistent name convention for aliases, this is also really important, right? When you scan your website and you see, okay, I have authors, and they have the list of all of the authors, but uh, the list of the authors called my team, and the rest of the people are just names uh, in aliases. It's it's like strange, right? It's probably better to, to do that here, okay, in the alias name, to provide the my uh, like author or team, and then to provide the name of that. So patterns are always the last moment. Uh, work for developers to add to the website. Uh, alias patterns is also really important when you try to, to, to analyze the quality of the website. So again, not optimized SEO. Uh, it's metadata is always a problem. Developers are done, functionality works perfectly, but we just scan and see, okay, it's just uh, nothing there. We had also a chance uh, one day, it was uh, like many years ago, uh, when we launched the website and we realized that we, we didn't open it for public. So keep in mind that you have that robots.txt file where you have to enable access to your website. Do not disable it. At least after you will go live, just make sure if you will open your website and uh, you're basically able to um, optimize it to, to provide titles, to provide descriptions, to provide information for the, for the page. Uh, keep on with those tools, you will be able to get the, the list of the secured uh, pages which are uh, failing with access denied. This is really bad practice to have content which is, which is not for public but to be available for not authorized users. So the tools, those tools will give me a quick uh, way of like seeing that okay, access denied, that means that this is either supposed to be open or, and by the way, the common bug, developers are usually testing through the logged in user, right? And testers are usually testing by not authorized users. So the issue is all of the time is that the contact for content type either secured or, or something else and the developers never have a chance to try to take a look on it like not authorized users. So just use the um, incognito mode for the Chrome. Uh, the same issue with the redirect tools will help me to get the list of all of the possible redirects I have for the website as well as analyze what, what are those and if, if those are a good redirects or bad and give the expertise on that. Uh, as well as tool will give me the list of pages and I will be able to figure out either those styled or not styled whenever it is kind of good or bad. So a lot of other bugs and I can talk about those uh, a lot for a while, but let's go next to the next slide. Um, so do we have someone who have counted bugs? 
website and I was playing with the lighthouse and I was surprised I found some issues for, for the clients we have developed the website so I have a, little, a big to-do list after I found this tool so just just try it and also be open to use browser add-ons don't don't like uh, think that you're you could do it by yourself just try to, to use those automated tools they are really helpful and um, Again, the five, and it's not important, just you take care of your quality, right? So just try which, which other tools you could, you could use to, which could help you to kind of to do an audit of your website. And if possible, you don't have enough expertise to know this is bug or this is improvement, or this is standard, or this is not standard. But tools will give you at least their vision, right, about the standards and their level information. You will need also to analyze the data you will get and basically do an action just to report those back or just talk to someone who has an expertise there and uh, that will, will help you basically to, to, to make your to like make quality to the higher level. Thank you so much. My name is Olga Kashenka again. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. If you have any recommendations about the next sessions, you're welcome to email me also with the, with those. Uh, if you like this presentation, please please share your feedback with us. If you don't like, please also share with us. Um, we, are, we are happy to hear. And uh, if uh, someone have, um, has any questions, uh, I am here to answer. Any questions? Three minutes left for questions. Do you have any uh, resources that uh, for getting familiar with maybe some of those standards, like you, you know, getting these uh, this output from these tools is great, but sometimes you know, not knowing, you know, like the number of characters for a title being fifty, mm -hmm. that was kind of interesting. Is there any resources you have to maybe help, uh, um, you know, compare this data against to make sure it's good or bad or what to change? Uh, there is no any like strict resource where could we go and just see it all in one place? No, of course, yeah. Uh, but uh, you, it, it's every 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 part of this accessibility or optimization for the search engine has it all all niche and it all own basically set of the articles and information there. But for example, if you're interested in journalize uh, the titles and meta descriptions, you could just Google for like optimal size for uh, metadata and you will have amount of characters which are uh, like the best, the most convenient for the search engines, as well as for open graph standards, like if you are sharing your website and you're just trying to figure out the standards, there is a specific standard for Facebook for example, which size of the image, which resolution is preferred to be shared, so what open graph recommendation they have. Just search for the, for example, open graph recommendation or SEO metadata recommendations and the charter limits. And by even seeing this data in the spreadsheet, you will be curious why in here it has like 101 and here you have 20, it's like something strange. Why this description, it takes the whole article and this description just 20 
characters. So you will be able uh, adjust by seeing the spreadsheet. So in mainly checking for inconsistencies yes. is a yes, good way yes. to, to, Just to, to know what to dive into. Classes equivalent, equivalent, like you see that uh, like those are responses of the web pages. So this is the metadata. What is the top uh, number of uh, like characters you have in the spreadsheet? Will give you at least understanding whatever goes wrong. Zeros, bad. Um, a lot of the characters also are not that good. Optim just Google what is the optimum, optimal, and you will get the information and you will be able to kind of judge. Okay. And Thank if you are specifically interested, in it's like a separate talk only about this, <laughs> like to go all of the standards for optimization and with a specific like recommendation. This will be the sizing, this will be the amount of characters, this will be this, this will be for Twitter cards, all of that. We're able to aggregate that and try to come up with the help materials. But this only like an experience which you could share and it's all aggregated from different fields and based on the actual like work with the actual clients. So um, if you're interested, it seems like you're interested in this. <laughs> Yeah, I do and a lot in of. Organized way, right? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. It's just nice to have you know some sort of guidance, and I mean, there's some stuff you know you're familiar you're familiar if, with. But if you're even right now, you understand that there is some guidance. Just Google for it. You, oh, yeah, you of course. Will find, yeah. yeah, you will find it. But just keep in mind that it's so many uh, like directions you will go, and each of these directions will be a separate story. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so for Screaming Frog, are there any command line tools that you could recommend um, if we wanted to do like periodic testing of SEO? Um, no. Oh, okay. uh, I don't trust any uh, websites or any common line applications. I don't feel the, the results I'm getting are truly what, what I expect to get and the information I get are like that, mm, that efficient for me. The, for the, the formatting of that file, I get the, result, the actual result, the ability to manage the result, and the amount of data I'm getting mm -hmm. is not comparable to okay. the experience from, from. So it's the best tool I've, I've ever used. Okay. We're consistently going to use it again and again. I even bought the license, so just be open for it. Just try it for a limited amount of requests, and then you will see you like it when you just go. Okay. Bye. All right, thanks. What is, the what is the license run for Screamfrog? Uh, it's about $100, $100 for, for, for the year. For the year. Okay, that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> and Thank any you. questions? I'm going to install all those tools. Thank you.